Good evening, everyone. I welcome to you to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibowo, and I would like to share to you today the word of the Lord from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. But before that, let us pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you because we know, God, that before we exist in this world, Father, you knew us, Lord. When we were formed in our mother's womb, you, Lord, alone had fearfully and wonderfully made us. This evening, we thank you for the greatest gift of all that we can receive this Christmas season. For those of us who have never received it, that is salvation. That is salvation, Lord. And for those of us who have received it, we continue to give thanks to you every single day. Because we know, God, we can never work to earn it. Thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to be able to share with you today the book of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And we are approaching the Christmas season very soon. And we know that Christmas is a time where not only do we celebrate because it's a holiday, but because we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, many people have said, you know, the birth of Jesus Christ wasn't exactly on December 25th, or the birth of Jesus Christ was not really in the month of December. So why do we celebrate it then? And the point of the matter is this, is that we don't have just to wait until December 25th to celebrate and be grateful for what Jesus has done in our lives. We can do it every single day, but all the more, it's this Christmas season when we all come together, when the world comes together and they celebrate Christmas. We want to realize the true meaning of Christmas is the fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth, became a human being, died for your sins and my sins. And because of that, those who believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Let's open together the book of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. It says the following. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Amen. The wise men from the east saw the star. And they followed it. The star had light in it. That's how they were able to see. Each and every one of us who have received the Lord into our hearts as our personal Savior, Jesus lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. And we have that light in which when others come to see us, when others approach us, when we come into contact with other people, people will know that we are different, that we shine. Well, perhaps you're saying or you're taking a look at yourself and you said, I don't see any light in me. Well, the, the fact of the matter is that the light itself may not be a physical light. However, it is just a matter of when people come, they get in touch with you, they talk to you, they feel like they can have a better direction in life or they can make decisions better because of the conversation they had with you do you know when you're driving at night or you're driving somewhere where the place is very very dark and you turn the light on on your car finally you're able to see what's in front of you you can make sure that you don't hit another car you can make sure that you don't hit an animal in the wilderness you can make sure that you don't hit a person because you have light to see what is in front of you. Therefore, life without our Lord Jesus Christ will be life without a light. Life without reading the Bible itself will be life without a light. Life without coming to worship the Lord and putting His words into practice will be life that is full of darkness. My brothers and my sisters, 
this Christmas season, let's not let the gifts, the parties, the celebration overshadow the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas, that is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The wise men in this book of Matthew chapter 2 said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. You might read this and say, wow, is it true then Jesus is just a king to the Jews? In the New Testament, my brothers and my sisters, it is written that it's, there's no longer Jews or Gentiles, right? But it is a new creation in Christ. That's what matters. We have been adopted into the family of the Lord. You and I are God's sons and God's daughters, spiritual sons and daughters of the Lord. When we follow God, it's true, life doesn't suddenly just go smoothly. Oh yes, there are people who might plan something bad against you, um, business competitors trying to make you trip, or people meaning or doing something that they would like to do just to harm you. However, we know one thing is certain, like in the Bible, it is said, let the wicked fall into their own traps while I pass by safely. The book of Psalms said that. As God's sons and daughters, even if we have to face difficulties in life, unpleasant situations, people who are hurtful, sickness perhaps, know one thing, if we take life one day at a time, we take the matters at hand that is in front of us, and we surrender it before the Lord, we do the best that we can, know that the Lord will do for you what you cannot do on your own. They have come to worship the Lord Jesus, the wise men. So our lives as Christians, we are to be an example for others to see. So when others see us and they know that we are Christians, they would want to have what we have. They would want to come and worship our Lord Jesus Christ as well. Jesus taught us again in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. It says the following, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Praise the Lord. A light, a salt. Any of you who love to cook or are able to cook, I myself, I'm not really good cook, but I can really cook some just really very simple things. But for anyone who knows how to cook very well, sometimes, you know, a dish, food, would not taste so good if you haven't yet put the salt in it. Soup will not taste so tasty without the addition of the actual salt. Now, our lives, when we become a salt, it means when we are living around people, we can feel or others can feel that we are making a difference because of our existence. The company that we work in becomes a better place. The business that we are running can run smoother even when problems come. God will give us wisdom as to how to take care of it, to handle the matter. A salt, something that people can taste. To be that kind of person, we can be a person when others see us, they see there's a different thing inside of us. There's something that sets us apart. When we are there, our house, our family members, a meeting just becomes 
better. It's not because we are good, but because Jesus is living inside of us. Jesus makes us different. And because of the Lord Jesus Christ that is at work, we can make or bring many differences into this world. Jesus went on to say that you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Have you ever heard of a story, perhaps someone um, or a co-worker, a friend might, um, or just in the community you hear that every time a Christian makes a mistake and does something bad, people would say, well, he's a Christian, he's a church goer, or she's a church goer. Why did she do that? Why, why did he do that? And if a person who doesn't go to church, they are just people who are living out there, a wildlife, they do something wrong. Some people just say, oh, whatever. They're just, you know, they're just, they're just people. But when a Christian sometimes makes a mistake or they're not being a good example, others point the fingers. Why is he like that? Why is she like that? You know, it is because we are a city set on a hill. We can't be hidden. We are not meant to live life just in a secret, only me, myself, and I, and my whole family, closing ourselves and not opening ourselves to other people. But on the contrary, even when we feel we are at our weakest, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Perhaps we feel, I'm not good enough to be an example. I don't know how to be an example. I'm not, I'm not a good speaker. I'm, I don't think I'm the best at what I'm doing. However, I want to tell you this. A lot of people in the Bible didn't think that they were the best. Moses, when he spoke, he had a stutter. He couldn't carry on talking, perhaps like his brother Aaron was able to. David, who became the king, he made a mistake. He had committed adultery with another man's wife and arranged the death of her husband. But God gave him a second chance because he came before the Lord and he asked for forgiveness. He had a change of heart and God restored his life. Although people had seen that he made such a big mistake, those mistakes God was able to turn around to bring something good out of. The story, in short, is that David and Bathsheba eventually had a son by the name of Solomon. And through that line of family, eventually, there was a man by the name of Joseph who was born. And then he became the earthly father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing? God is a God of second chance. And the story of the prostitute Rahab. She was a prostitute, but then her story was written in the Bible. She has a change of life. And her life really was not the same anymore. In the New Testament, the story of Paul, who was once a persecutor of the brethren, of the Christians. He basically had okayed the stoning of Stephen. He could have stopped it, perhaps, but he didn't. But God used him to be his servant that eventually wrote more than half of the New Testament. Isn't it amazing? Each and every one of our lives, we are meant to be a city on a hill, to be an example. Perhaps you feel, I'm not the best father to my children, or I haven't been the best wife or husband. I haven't been the best son. I'm not the best student in my class. The point is that you should be the best version of yourself that you can be with the help of the Lord. No one is perfect. Perhaps you feel, I'm not a very good speaker, but you are a good cook. Perhaps another person might say, I'm not a very good son. I don't really spend all the time every day with my parents, but you support them financially and you do your best to try to see them. Or perhaps you're saying, I haven't been a good mother to my children. I work too much. But however, you should look back and think, perhaps that might be true, but hey, you acknowledged it and you're trying to make a difference. And hey, 
you had provided provided them with a good life and then you made time although you knew you don't have too much but you made the best out of what you have and your children are blessed perhaps you say well i am not the best pastor you know i don't preach the best sermon ever and i can tell you that myself too you know i don't speak the best i don't speak the best i don't deliver the best sermons but I wanted to make sure that every day or every time I have an opportunity to speak, to preach, that I would preach with all of my heart and give the best sermon that I can with the help of the Lord. The point is to do the best that we can, to be the best version, like that city on a hill, so that when others see us, they can tell that person has really done his or her best. My brothers and my sisters, let us remember in this Christmas season. One, we are not just called to live for ourselves, but we are called to live to be an example for others. Second, we are living in this life where we need to be guided every single day by that star, by that light. And who is that light? How do we see that light? The light is the Lord Jesus Christ. How could we be guided by the light? by reading the Bible and putting it into practice every single day. Amen. Jesus loves you so much. If you're a person who have never accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior, I'd like to give you an opportunity this moment, if you are watching this video, to receive the Lord as your Savior, to then join the church and grow in your faith, have a new life, and know that your sins have been forgiven if you receive Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. If you're a person who have received Jesus and you are reminded that, hey, I have to now share my faith to others. I have to be an example that I want to pray for you too, so that you will be given the wisdom in order to know where to go, who to go to, and how to be a blessing. Amen. With that, I'd like to invite you to pray this prayer with me. If you've never received the Lord Jesus, into your heart as your Lord and Savior, and you'd like to accept Him, you'd like to have a personal relationship with Him, say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Lord God, forgive me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Secondly, I'd like to pray for each one of you. Those of you who have received Jesus Christ, but you want to have the boldness to be able to share the gospel to the world, maybe the people that you love. I'd like to pray for you, Lord Jesus. I pray for each and every one of the people who are listening to this video right now, God, if they want to have the wisdom as to how, Lord, to be able to share the gospel to people that they love, to be able to be a salt and a light. Father, I pray, may you continue to minister to each and every one of their hearts. Strengthen them. If there's anybody who are sick, Father, those who, of them who are tired, Lord, heal them, God, and strengthen them in your name, God. We pray, we thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, God's people say, Amen. God bless you all, and I'll see you next week.